don't get caught out in the summer heat getting eaten alive by those venomous wing vermin. Hey team, welcome back to Lawn Journeys. This is just a quick update on the implementation of my Dynatrap uh, insect trap. Um, you can link to the video above. I have done a comparison of the Dynatrap with um, another product that I purchased through Amazon last season. It was the Mosquito Eradicator. Um, and if you go back and look at that video, I opened this up and I opened those up and we compared what types of insects were in them or not in them. We'll talk a little bit about what I find in the Dynatrap and I'm gonna show you what I collect in the first week of operation all in this video. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm going to install my replacement bulb, which is good for four to six months of operation. I run these continuously in my yard. I have one, it's located approximately um, 30 feet off of my deck area. I have to say I don't really have a mosquito problem or I haven't in the past as you see a bug flying on my lens. I did use the also deploy the mosquito eradicators last season which were was a yeast and uh, I think it was a yeast and sugar solution in this uh, proprietary tube which I hung in the trees. You can link to the video above. There are some comments on that video if you go back and look at it from um, uh, one individual who seems to be very knowledgeable in the mosquito world and if he's watching this I'm sure he's going to uh, leave some some updates so I invite you I believe your name was Colin if I recall um, there is a new product out from that company this year which I understand uses a different solution they're kind of pricey and I don't think I'm going to be using those um, from what I've read on uh, online and I think on Colin's website if I have the name correct um, there's no link that they are actually effective in mosquito control. All right, so let's open this up. All right, so the way the mosquito eradicator works is um, we have a black light here that's supposed to attract the bugs. There is a fan that runs inside the machine here, okay? The bugs are drawn to the light. Um, they get sucked in. When the fan's running, it opens this chamber right here and the bugs um, get caught in this lower chamber um, and they're unable to get out so they kind of get trapped this thing does collect a ton of moths um, a lot of insects um, some people feel as though these are highly effective and other people tell me they're not effective at all the fact of the matter is I bought this thing three years ago or so and I have it so I'm going to continue to run it so in order to replace the bulb, I just need to remove this lid. So we took the lid off. There's some electronics here in the top. Um, there's one more screw I need to remove here on the side in order to access the bulb. It's right up. This bulb pops out. Basically, you need to replace this um, because the intensity of the bulb decreases over runtime. They look the same, but the intensity won't be the same. Pop that in. Put this back in. Reinsert the screw. Reinstall the top. And there's one screw that goes in which keeps it secure. So the bulb replacement took all but three minutes. Um, it's easy to knock out. Like I said, this Dynatrap model I've been running probably, this is going to be the fourth year. Um, I run it 24-7. I just um, plug it in and let it go. I don't bother shutting it off. Um, the bulb is rated for four to six months of 24-hour operation. So in New Jersey, I mean, if I start this thing up, it's almost the end of May. I mean, it'll take me into the fall, post height of mosquito season. So I just leave it on. Um, it's a compact fluorescent um, light, so it uses minimal wattage. The fan, I think the whole thing, if uh, I check, I'll leave some notes below. I think it's like maybe five or seven watts. So you're talking cents per day to run. Some people um, will put them on an outdoor timer and um, only run them at night. Um, you can do what you like. 
I do have timers, but I've never um, taken it to that level. I just turn it on and let it let her rip. All right, team. So I had to reopen this up because I found a little problem. I don't know if you guys can see this. Hopefully it's focused. This thing was still running in the fall. Obviously, I've had some critter damage. So I am not going to plug this in. I'm going to have to replace this power cord. So as you can see, it's rather simple. Um, we have a uh, tie down here to secure the cord and it's easily disconnected. All right, team, uh, safety first. I recommend, ah, just joking. I, uh, that's not funny, right? Um, obviously I'm not plugging this in. It's too bad um, it's chewed this far down. If it was chewed uh, farther up, I could have just cut it and uh, shortened the wire. I, a couple days later, I have my order in. I have a six foot replacement cord I sourced from Amazon. Uh, there's no reason to share the link. I mean, you guys can look at these. The only important thing was is that this was not a grounded, it's just a polarized outlet. Um, so I have uh, the two wires. I did match the AUG. This was an 18 AUG um, wire, which is the uh, thickness of it. Um, it supports up to 10 amps, 125 volts. And how I determined that was um, what was stamped on the old cord here was uh, 18 AUG. So as you can see, um, they're virtually the same wires. I'm probably gonna snip a little of this off here um, when we do this installation. And uh, as you remember, so as not to be electrified, um, I didn't wanna plug this in. I don't know what ate this. I don't know if it was a, a cricket. I don't know if it was a, a rat, a squirrel, a chipmunk. A rabbit, who knows? I mean, I've had this thing up for a number of years and I've never had anybody chew through the wire. So anyway, let's uh, install this and uh, get her operating. It'll be a piece of cake. And don't go away, because I'm gonna show you this thing in operation. And if you stick around to the end of the video, um, I have a couple things I wanted to say that maybe some folks would like to comment on about the Dynatrap. Installation here, I'm gonna replace this. As you know, um, the polarized plug, um, one of these is black and one is white, and I'm gonna return them to the same position. Um, so what I need to do first is lock this cord down underneath this vise pinch point, wherever you wanna call it. This is pretty much uh, UL, if you ever look at something that's UL certified, um, even if you install an appliance in your house, um, you need to lock the cord down so it can't be pulled out. I'm going to um, attach these here securely, and I'm going to push additional cord through here and lock it down. That's the black. Push the white through. Tie that one down. I'll check these, make sure I can't pull them out. They're both secure. Just make that snug. That prevents anybody from doing this and ripping this connection out. That's it. We're ready to rock and roll. We'll reinstall the top. All right, team. So that was a quick fix. Um, we installed our new uh, black light for the season. Um, they claim if you run this thing 24 seven, you can get uh, four to six months out of it. They lose their intensity as, uh, you know, as they get older. Um, some of the new Dynatraps, I think all of them actually now have like an LED light strip in them. I think they claim you should replace those every four years. Um, maybe it was five, I can't recall. You guys can check it out on their website. I'll link um, to some, some of the Dynatrap um, units um, in the in the notes if you guys want to check it out. Um, you can purchase them directly from Dynatrap. You can get them on Amazon. Um, I've seen them on QVC. I think I bought this one on QVC some years ago. And there are different sizes. Um, so we replaced the light. I replaced the cord. Um, we're going to plug it in and test it. It should be safe. Um, there is also a switch under here, which um, you probably can't see on the camera but you can turn it on and off. Like I said, I leave this thing running 24-7 um, once I plug it in. Um, it, it costs cents a day to run. 
Um, the only thing I don't have in here is they have like some pheromone type packs that you can purchase. Um, maybe they're better at attracting mosquitoes. Honestly, I don't know. They're like, I think over $20 to buy one and you're supposed to change it. I want to say it was every month. I'll, I'll add a link to that too in the show notes. Um, I haven't tried one. So actually guys, do me a favor. If anybody has a Dynatrap and if you've used the pack that gets inserted into it, please leave me a comment. Let me know if you're finding different insects in here with the pack versus not having the pack, especially if you're able to identify mosquitoes. I'd like to say, um, if it works any better. I think it's a little expensive. I mean, you know, you, you could keep buying this stuff uh, nonstop and, you know, go broke. Long story short, I bought this thing maybe four or five years ago. It does collect a lot of moths. It collects some beetles. Um, I think it's caught some mosquitoes, but they're really hard to um, find when you dump it out. And like I said earlier, you can link to the video where I did the uh, Dynatrap versus the uh, mosquito eradicator. There's some controversy over whether these really catch mosquitoes. Leave those comments in here. Also, I'd like to see um, what you guys think. Um, so let's plug this in and let's test it. Hey team, Dynatrap is repaired. She's running. I'm gonna take my mic off so you can hear it. That's the fan. That's the fan. Okay, so you can hear the fan is running and I'm gonna show you guys a close up here. The little, uh, the wings inside the um, cage are pushed down so the bugs will get sucked in um, and then they can't get their way out. Um, my light is on. I'm going to show you that in uh, darkness. Um, so everything's working and she's running and I'm just going to, I can feel the air coming out of here. It moves quite a bit of air. So I'm going to leave this thing uh, running now for the summer and um, what I'll do is maybe do a follow-up later or if I do any other types of mosquito control I'll do a second video this summer and I'll do an update on how the Dynatrap is doing and um, show you if I um, use any of the Spartan mosquito eradicators this season that I used last year. I don't know if they did anything. Um, you guys can go back and watch that video. It's almost impossible to prove in this type of environment if they're working or not. It's not controlled. Um, you know you have neighbors spraying uh, mosquito control stuff um, you know it's not a it, it's not a controlled environment it's impossible to scientifically say yes or no so i do have a challenge if uh, one of the viewers colin happens to watch this video again i invite you to leave a comment and add a link to your website um, colin is really into um, mosquito eradication um, but Colin if you're out there leave some comments um, I'd like to know you know what you think um, of the new Spartan product that I understand just came out it may have a different material in it so maybe we could do a video on that down the road it's the age-old you know who can uh, keep the mosquitoes away um, fight there's all kinds of products out there do any of them really work all right team I want to thank you guys for sticking around the Dynatrap has been running for a week. I'm gonna open it up. We're gonna take a look and see what we've captured. The proof is in the pudding. So as you guys can see, I just removed the trap um, from the bottom of the Dynatrap. If you look in the top, you can see here that the little doors snap shut. Um, which is because the blower is not blowing in it, right? So let's uh, open this up and dump it out on the table and let's do a little entomological investigation and see what we got. All right, so to get the bugs out, we remove the top. Oh, that one made it. As you can see, we have a bunch of flies in here they're still moving around, having a good old time. So here we go. I'm gonna pour this out. My wife's gonna have a conniption. Because now there are bugs all over our table. That's a week. Um, we can see there are some beetles. I mean, there's 
couple hundred flies in here. It's amazing how many flies this thing um, attracts. Of course, we have moths. I'm not an entomologist, but that looks like some nasty winged vermin. There's a little fly zooming around here. And what I want to do is separate some of the smaller bugs here. I think I see some mosquitoes in here. So let's take a closer look here. That right there looks like right above my finger. Right there, I believe that's a mosquito. Now, Colin, you can dispute me because I can't say with any certainty. I had entomology in college. That looks like a mosquito. I think that's a mosquito. Getting a little windy out here. There's a lot of small insects in here. I think that's a mosquito right there. Dynatrap, doing the job. So can I say definitively that this thing sucks mosquitoes in like a vacuum? No. Um, does it catch some? I thought it did, but I'm not an entomologist. I just play one on YouTube. Just kidding, right? Ha. But <laughs> um, guys, let me know what you do to manage your mosquitoes. Leave some comments. Let me know if any of you um, put that pheromone pack in your Dynatrap and if you think you collect different types of insects or maybe more um, mosquitoes. I'd be interested to know and get out there, get it done. And I'll see you guys next time on Lawn Journeys.